How are you? Doing well, thank you. How are you? Good, good. Uh, good to be inside the house, you know, out of the freezing cold. Absolutely, yeah. We were outside a little bit today and agreed it is, uh, it's freezing. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, coaching in this weather. Is, uh, it's a little bit challenging, but hey. Yeah, um, my little brother actually played a tournament today. I think it was um, Muswell Hill and okay. uh, it was probably freezing out there. How old is he? <laughs> uh, he is, wow, he's 15 now. Okay. Yeah. So he's uh, kind of still doing his thing and uh, playing a lot of tennis, but uh, also in school and all of that. So just trying to work out what his what his plan is, I think. But long way away for him. He doesn't have to make any decisions sure. yet. <laughs> sure, sure. He's still just enjoying, going with the flow, enjoying playing. Okay. Exactly. What, what are you doing now? When, uh, when did you finish uni, <laughs> first of uh, all? So I, yeah, sure. So I graduated in May 2020 and I started a job uh, working for a, a, a finance company in the city in New York uh, in, when was it? It was in August. Mm -hmm. but, sorry. Uh, um, okay. I, uh, but I've kind of been bouncing around the US, honestly, uh, since then, just because of COVID and uh, mm -hmm. So I've been up and down the East Coast, staying in Airbnbs everywhere, which has been nice. Uh, kind of get to see a bit more of the more of the states, um, and then we're planning on moving in in February, sort of time. But I'm actually now back in London just for the holidays with my family, which is really nice. When did you When did you arrive to London? Uh, I think I got back about four weeks ago now. Mm -hmm. So That's definitely been. Fun, yeah. I was. Yeah, I was hoping obviously to come back in the summer. I usually do, but. Uh, because of COVID and everything, there was complications with visas and all of that stuff. So I had to stay out there for a while. But now I've got that all sorted. Uh, we're, all, we're all good, which is and nice. So you're planning on going back in February, right? Um, well, I've got a flight in 10 days. I'm going to look okay. at apartment in New York with some friends. And then uh, we'll probably go back to Ithaca, which is where I went to university, mm -hmm. uh, Cornell for a few weeks and then and then yeah and then plan is to move in but you know you can't make plans these days so true, true. um did you i mean are you already looking for like a job or something or are you just going to see what's happening at the time yeah no so i i had a job coming out of college which i started in august so i've been working remotely uh, since oh. then but because obviously because of covid uh, the office has not opened yet hoping it'll open as soon as possible okay. but Okay. And just um, tell me a little bit about how tennis started for you, basically. What's what's your first memory of tennis and how... how first you memory of tennis. Playing? Um, yeah, sure. So I guess, I mean, the main reason I got into tennis is because of my parents, you know, just like many, many of us, we just try a lot of different sports when we're young. Um, I, I always loved football, um, played some, played golf uh, and tennis as well. And I think the first time I picked up a racket was probably nine or 10 years old. Um, my first kind of experience was just kind of the after school uh, sessions that they had down at the Cumberland Tennis Club, mm -hmm. which is in Hampstead, my local club. Okay. And yeah, I grew up playing there. Um, also played uh, at a club called uh, the Georgians Tennis Club, uh, which is in Crouch End. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that was kind of how it all happened. Um, and how did, you, I, how did you know you're gonna do tennis? That's... Well, I played tennis and football mostly up until I was about 13 or 14 and then decided, you know, I wanted to pursue tennis the most. I enjoyed it the most at the time. And, uh, well, I definitely don't regret it because it, it, it took me to amazing places and and uh, a great university experience mm -hmm. as well. So uh, definitely happy with that decision. And when when did you decide to go to the States to study and with the tennis uh, scholarship, I'm guessing, right? Um, uh, well, actually, so I, I went to an Ivy League. Uh, so the way that they do sports scholarships is completely on a kind of financial aid basis is the way they call it. So uh, it's, it's based, so you get your, your place at the university and your place on the, on the tennis team or whichever sports team that you join. But 
it's completely on a needs base. So it's they they look at your financial situation and then they do they do buy it that way, uh, which is different to the majority of schools, which obviously they have a certain amount of scholarships that they're allowed to give and they share them across the team and they give more to their better players and and then it kind of goes down in that way. Um, but I had kind of been aware of the idea of, uh, of of going to US college for tennis for quite a few years by the time I, I decided to pursue it when I was probably 16, 17 sort of age. Um, I was in my probably halfway through my second last year of, of university, I mean of, of school, sorry. And um, a few of my coaches had spent time out there. They're at Mississippi State. Uh, a friend of mine played at um, Stanford as well, who a guy from uh, my local tennis club. So I kind of spoke to a load of people and they all told me the benefits of it. And so we kind of started the process off, I'd say about a year and a half before I, before I ended up. That is quite, quite a long time. Yeah, well, there's there's a lot to do. Uh, unfortunately, there's, there's kind of a, a quite a process about it, and you know, when for me, I, I, I my level was was pretty good, but I wasn't you know top in the country or anything, and I did, I wasn't highly really high ranking like that. Often coaches will be reach out reaching out to you and and recruiting you in that sense. But for me, once I decided that I wanted to head out to the States, it was more up to up to me to try and pursue that. So um, we started that whole process of emailing coaches and and all of that stuff about, yeah, about a year and a half before I ended up out there. What was the most difficult part of uh, the application and choosing which, uh, which college to go to? Um, so, well, for me, I would say that I wasn't as lucky as some to have a load of different options. So it wasn't the most okay. difficult decision <laughs> for me because I was kind of deciding between only a few. And I really wanted to, well, uh, for me at the time, tennis was kind of all I was concerned with. I just wanted to go out there and, mm -hmm. and play tennis. I didn't really, I wasn't as concerned about the academic side, but my parents were really on me about going to a school where I could also get a great education and and then have you know have that coming out of college and obviously it's such a long hard road trying to be a pro tennis player yeah. uh, as uh, you know so many people realize it's it's important to have a good education to fall back on and so we were looking for opportunities where I could do both and so uh, I think I ended up getting in touch with Cornell University uh, with the coach there through my coach at the time, uh, a guy called James Chowdhury, um, who was a really great coach. And he went to Mississippi State, but he knew uh, the Cornell tennis coach, Sylvia Sanasoyu. And so we were put in touch in that way. And I ended up signing very, actually very late on. I think it was about, I think it was December of my upper sixth year was when I ended up kind of committing and, getting the letter of intent from the school, which was obviously really exciting. So how that come, was great. How come so late, let's say? Um, well, I think the reason that I, jo I signed so late was because the coach had filled all of his spots that he had planned on, on bringing in at the time. And he had to then get, uh, he had to request from the university for another spot to let me to join. So. He, he had a whole process there and so it was a little bit delayed but mm -hmm. I was I was definitely glad to so that it all worked out in the end how how did that um, let's say affect further your time spent there your tennis the fact that I mean I'm guessing that him having to ask for another spot might have made it a little bit tricky in terms of matches and stuff like that or not uh, well in terms of kind of once I got there I, I was I would say I was given every opportunity mm -hmm. just like everybody else on the team which was great um we I was very lucky to join a team that was really really strong uh we were kind of being led by five seniors who were on the team obviously big personalities and great tennis players so kind of hard to break into the lineup of for me singles wise anyway all four years just because the team was so strong um mm -hmm. I was playing quite a lot of doubles here and there and so I really enjoyed that that ended up being kind of a strength of mine anyway and
Um, but I wouldn't say that the fact that the coach had to get an extra spot for me really put me at a disadvantage in any way. Mm -hmm. And let's say um, if you were to give yourself a, an advice uh, at the age of 17 again, what would, you, what would your advice be in terms of choosing the school or choosing your path uh, in education uh, well, or in tennis? I'd say there's a few different things that I would, I would tell myself if I could now. The, the first thing is probably to have listened to my parents. Um, I'm definitely in what way? In what way? <laughs> And well, I'm definitely glad that they they pushed me to go to a school that where I could get a good education, as I said before, um, because you know the odds of you being able to make it as a pro tennis player are, are very low, and mm -hmm. you have to be uh, ex you have to work exceptionally hard, and you have to be an exceptionally strong player to to make it. And so, obviously, the majority of us don't, and and therefore, I'm very glad that I was I was able to emerge with a great education, and now. While I'm not pursuing pro tennis, I, I you know, I, I, I came out employed, which was very nice in the current coronavirus yeah. we were in, um, which was very nice. And but also just the fact that I, I had so much more that I could experience at, at university, just not just tennis. Uh, you know, I, I took some amazing classes and I met some really amazing people. So definitely glad about that aspect. aspect. Uh, I would say one piece of advice that's very important to take into account is is uh what coach that you're you're working with um you Even know before it, uni or at uni at university at uni. yeah mm -hmm. I, I i i get the sense that a lot of people will kind of jump at the first opportunity as soon as they get an offer of a full scholarship it's like okay yeah that's great it's sorted but it's important to to you know re make sure that you, you you're able to work with who, who whoever your coach is and um because it's 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 a difficult life being a college tennis player you have to you have to manage a lot of different things and not just especially for us it, we weren't really given any sort of advantages being athletes if anything our professors hated the fact that we would miss classes and for tournaments and all of that stuff okay. so it's not easy to manage the two and so it's kind of it's important to have a good relationship with the coach i think to really be able to to just allow you to manage everything at the same time uh why are you saying that like how was your relationship well i had i had somewhat of a interesting relationship with my coach i really my coach was so sylvia tennis as i Ooh. mentioned he's the he's the cornell tennis coach he was one of the hardest working most dedicated coaches i ever met and Uh, I cannot fault him at all in that sense. Um, we kind of, the two of us maybe had some disagreements over the four years, as, as many do. But I wouldn't honestly say from my experience that I would, I would make that advice. But I have some friends who, uh, obviously, I don't want to, you know, name any names, so many coaches. But had some difficult experiences with their coaches, especially in the places where, you know, you're relying on having a scholarship to be able to attend school. And... I've, I, I do know some people who had their scholarships taken away and then they and then they ended up having to transfer schools midway through, which is obviously a very difficult situation for anyone yeah. to be in. But in so, what, how does it how does relation the relationship with the coach affect that? Let's say, I mean, what were the what were the well, at, the end of the day, at the end of the day, it's up to the coach um, who gets the scholarships, who he believes in the team going forward and he has the power to or he, He, sorry, has the power to take that scholarship away whenever he wants. And so I think that some of my, some people that I know that were got stuck in those sticky situations felt that they were perhaps not treated as fairly as they, as they could have been. And again, that that's kind of down to the coach. And so it's often, I think, important to kind of get some, do your background research, try and talk to people who who know the different coaching teams of different places and because there are, there are some amazing, amazing college coaches that can really improve your game. And I, I had one of them, honestly, there was some guys in our team that made really amazing strides when they were at college. And, and I can think of one person who was actually a senior, who was the captain when I joined as a freshman, but he joined as a freshman, didn't play any matches his first year. And by the time he left, he was, num he was playing number one for us. 
Really? And he's now playing pro tennis. Um, he's, I think he got up to like 450 ATP. Oh, that's really, high. really good. Yeah. Uh, still going along, you know, he's had some injury troubles and stuff, but his game was completely transformed, I think, by yeah, college that's, tennis. that's what I was going to ask. Like, how did that complete shift happen? I think it was somewhat the environment that he was in. Mm -hmm. I think he was kind of brought up playing tennis i think he was from australia but also spent some time in guam which is a, a, a small territory uh an island off in the pacific and so he didn't have a great infrastructure growing up probably as much as then when he joined, mm -hmm. uh, joined college tennis you suddenly have 15 guys to train with whenever you want you know being competitive we're pushing each other harder and i think he really really thrived in that environment and i i know others that have as well i mean mm -hmm. um i'm sure everyone knows paul paul jubb um yeah. who i i know i knew fairly well before we went to uni and we played each other a couple times you know we, we were there or thereabouts together but now he's ncaa champion which is <laughs> pretty incredible thing so i i know for i haven't spoken to him directly but i'm sure for him college tennis has been a real kind of stimulator for his game and really allowed him to push on to the next level mm -hmm. is it i mean is everything taken care of in, ter in terms of matches and uh, trainings and stuff like that or do players actually have to um, organize things themselves oh, i think we might have lost rohan for a bit The connection is a little bit off. So hopefully he can. Um, yeah, so I think uh, Rohan's connection has gone off a little bit, but we're going to get him back. Um, if you do have any questions about college tennis, please fire away. Just gonna see if we can get the internet working again and the connection. Yes. Sorry, I, I we have dodgy Wi-Fi over here. That's all right. We're keeping it interesting, you know, and <laughs> keeping Glad people to. on their toes. Yeah, yeah. So I was just asking about the um, just the setup a little bit. Um, is everything taken care of? Um, on in terms of trainings, tournaments, yeah. matches. Absolutely. Do players have to worry about anything? No, no. That's the one thing that's really, really great about the U.S. college system. Everything is sort of set up for you. We we have a, a schedule done for us. You know, we're training six days a week and probably yeah. two and a half, three hours of tennis and an hour of fitness most days. So really giving you a great base to improve. Um, we We had a volunteer assistant coach actually when we were when, when uh, throughout the four years that I was at Cornell and they would take care of everything from entering us into tournaments, hotels, transportation, you know, they were really amazing at all that stuff. So it really allows you just to focus on your studies yeah. and, and your tennis, which is a really great, great setup. And that's why I think it's such a, an advantage for so many people to be able to, to be able to have that experience. Have that, have that experience absolutely. Uh, um, you said you were training six days a week. Yes. And I've heard of, uh, you know, friends of mine that have been to the States and I've heard about this crazy uh, training schedule. Uh, Absolutely. Yeah. Along it's... with studying, how does that work? Because well, it sounds really tiring. It's definitely busy. I, w I would say that it's definitely busy. Um, and, you know, when you're in classes for six hours a day and you've got four hours of homework sometimes it definitely feels like there aren't enough hours in the day um we would do a lot of early mornings a lot of 7 a.m sort of fitness trainings and and things like that so that we were able to get everything in um but i think that it's i would say that it's a hard transition at the beginning because suddenly you're you have to deal with everything yourself you need to be able to manage both sides of putting all the training in making sure you're fresh making sure you're getting enough sleep eating right and doing your studies so it, it's a lot to it's a lot to be on your plate especially 
you know, uh, for me anyway, I didn't go to boarding school or anything. I, I lived with my parents growing up. And so it was, it was a lot easier to, to deal with everything like that. So when you're kind of thrown at the deep end, there's definitely a lot to think about. Um, but I would say that there's a lot more benefit from that than harm because it teaches you so many, so many life skills that are, that are great going forward in terms of managing your time and, you know, being able to work hard, but also working out how to, how to allocate the hours of the day, which are, are definitely skills that I'm happy that I now have going forwards, especially going into the working world. Yeah, uh, and apart from that, I say, what do you feel like tennis has brought onto your career? On to, so, Current so, career. On to, so I, obviously my career now is, is very different to, it's not in the sporting world or anything like that, but um, I think it really teaches you great lessons, just be playing a sport competitively playing it seriously really teaches you kind of determination discipline it, it, it definitely prepares you really well for for life going forwards so i would definitely i would definitely encourage you know any young kid to to pursue a port a sport seriously because mm -hmm. it just makes you much more of a motivated and competitive and i think driven person overall but that that's just my view. <laughs> I think yeah, I think it's it's the case for a lot of people, uh, especially the discipline part and just you know managing to overcome little obstacles. I Absolutely, think it's very important. And just looking back, let's say, what would be your happiest memory from the the four years you spent um, at university? And what would be like your toughest? What was your toughest moment? Um, so my happiest memory, I'll start with that, was definitely the end of my freshman year. We managed to win the Ivy League title, which oh, wow. was a great, we hadn't won, I think it's only twice or three times in the team's history that we managed to do it. So that was an amazing experience and mm -hmm. share that with everyone on the team was, was, was something that you'll never really forget. And I've got the Ivy League ring somewhere in my room, I'm actually oh. not sure. But, um, wow, that's, that's really, yeah, yeah that's yeah, really... something I can definitely never forget. Um, toughest moment for, for myself and, this, and, and for the team probably was in March of this year. You know, we were having, we, this year we were having a really great year. I think we were mm -hmm. 10 and 2 was our, was our record at the time. And we were ranked inside the top 20 in the country. And then COVID hit and school got cancelled, tennis got cancelled. For me, obviously, I was a senior and... I, I I had a, a large class uh, alongside me. There were four other guys in the team who, who were in my year and we kind of had done it all together. So it was it was a real shame not to be able to finish that out the whole way. But mm -hmm. it, 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 so many people face the same True. difficulties there. So I, I can't really complain. <laughs> but at least you can say you won it once, right? Exactly, you, exactly. You've, uh, you've made a uh, unique... Not many people can say that. So definitely yeah. something to be proud of. True. And... Let's say looking, I mean, when did you decide that after finishing uni, you weren't going to come back to tennis professionally or in a more competitive way? Um, I'll be honest, I probably made that decision probably a couple years into, into being in college. Um, I think that you in order to play pro you have to want it more than anything else and mm -hmm. i've i've found so many other things at, at, at university that interested me i i love my classes and and you know was excited about honestly entering working life um and then the other the other part is that i i wasn't even in the, the starting six for the cornell team and so it's hard to then you, when when you realize how high the level is and how mm -hmm. how good you've got to get i mean it's it's a difficult world out there and you really have to want it more than anything else i think and so it was a decision that i didn't i didn't it wasn't kind of a difficult decision for me it was it was kind of an acceptance at that point and i got great great things out of college tennis regardless of the fact that i'm not trying to go professional mm -hmm. um but i know that 
I, I definitely believe that it is a good avenue to go for a lot of people if they do want to go pro just because of what I said before of the setup that you have and the, and the great tournaments that you get to play and, you know, everything that comes with it. It's, it's definitely a great experience and, you know, it's, it's not cheap to try and pursue a professional career, having lessons, traveling, all of that stuff. It's, it's, it's not easy to do. And I it's think not that, a profitable business, is it? For a very no, long time. <laughs> no, obviously your ranking has got to be so high up for you even to be breaking even. And so to then have that opportunity to, to play four years of, of tennis, continue your development, both, kind of educationally and as a tennis player is is one that's unrivaled i think and a really good opportunity to mature and become a much stronger player when you when you do decide to go on the tour and let's say if let's say there is someone that would actually want to pursue the tennis so even further and mm. would need to break into that i don't know top four top five uh which means playing singles all the time, being there for every match. What do you think that player would have to do to, you know, level up in a way? Oh, I, I would say it's just like anything else. Just work really, really hard and <laughs> the results will come because that's, that's always how it is. It's, it, it doesn't just happen at the, click, at the press of a switch. You know, it's, it's long, hard hours on the court and in the gym and, you know, learning about the game, focusing on the mental aspect, you know, every part is so important. And the only thing you can do is is just give everything every time you're on the court, just because that's the quickest way to improve. Uh, are there coaches that are willing to help you individually if you want to yeah, do that? Yeah, absolutely. I always found that, that we, we had two coaches, which most teams do. So we had a head coach and an assistant coach. And we could always reach out to either coach to try and schedule individual training if we ever wanted to. I don't know if that's at the same at every university, but no matter what level you are on the team, you could always you could always do individual sessions. It was always really exciting, which is again a great benefit to have. How is life as a student, uh, like the real life, uh, the real life of a student at Cornell, compared to what you thought it might be? Um, I'll be honest, I didn't really know what I thought it was going to be like, so I can't really compare. But I would say that life as a student at Cornell, especially as a student athlete, there's a, there's a lot to juggle. There's a lot going on the whole time, but there's also just so many opportunities to take advantage of. Um, and as long as you kind of stay on the straight and narrow and try not to get distracted by all the, all the fun stuff, which of course does exist and is a benefit. I was, I was, gonna, I was going to ask if there is a social part to of course, of course there that is. I mean, like true. like any university, you you make friends for life, and of course you you make some good decisions and some bad decisions. But um, it's definitely it's up to you. You know, you especially once you go to uni, you don't have anyone telling you you can't do this, you can't do that. It's mm -hmm. up to you to to make the right decisions and make sure you're getting enough sleep and eating right and all of those things that can so that you can so easily just disregard because you're mm -hmm. free and you have the opportunity to do whatever you want so um of course uh, university comes with its its dangers and its <laughs> its temptations but yeah um, i can see a few in the comments there <laughs> I think, yeah um no, but how must was... must be my friends commenting <laughs> yeah yeah there's a lot of them actually <laughs> Oh God! <laughs> yeah. Um, how was adapting to um, the campus? Because um, it's a bit isolated, and London is pretty buzzy. And uh, well, actually, I I didn't really find it isolating at all. Uh, it's quite a, it's a fairly big university. I think it's the biggest in the Ivy League. So I think we had sixteen or fifteen thousand kids in undergrad across the four years. So you don't feel isolated at all uh, with the way it's all set up. They're kind of your first year you live in dorms. So I was assigned, I, I decided that I wanted to kind of do the proper college experience and was assigned randomly to, a, to a roommate. And you just, from there, it's so easy to make friends. And how, I was, never that, really... how was it living with uh, someone else sharing a room? 
It was honestly fine. Um, yeah, okay. I. I, my roommate was a guy called Jared, uh, who was from Birmingham, Alabama. So we, we had somewhat different backgrounds and, but I enjoyed every part of it, meeting so many new people and, and especially that first year is when you, you really get to grips with everything and see what, see what the university has to offer. And yeah, I, I can't complain. I, I loved every minute of it. Mm -hmm. So overall, would you recommend it to someone that doesn't want to necessarily be a pro in tennis, but would still like to compete? I would, absolutely I would. Um, I would say that even though, as I said, I, I, I'm not, I, I decided fairly early on that I, I'm not, I wasn't going to try and pursue pro, pro tennis. It was a, being on the tennis team and competing and, and staying in great shape really kept, kept me disciplined in an environment, as you said, where, you, where it's easy to, to to make bad decisions and fall off the wagon. And so I was really grateful to tennis over, over the four years to, to kind of make sure I had a good schedule and make sure I was active, which, which I, uh, I think is so important, you know, getting exercise and, and competing with the guys and pushing, pushing each other to, to the limit. You know, it's uh, something that even, even if you're not trying to be a pro tennis player, it's something that's thoroughly enjoyable in my opinion. And, and why maybe choose a university from the states and not go to a university here in the uk with a tennis scholarship or a university that has a pretty good tennis team let's say well i i guess it depends what you're looking for um where, before i went to university i still kind of was entertaining the possibility of of, of playing professional tennis and mm -hmm. and and you know i, I as i said i'm not I'm not, it's, it's not a shame that that didn't occur, mm -hmm. but also at the time, I think that British university tennis has really improved over the last few years in terms of the quality of training that you get and the resources. Um, a friend of mine, uh, Ben Jones actually is at Bath University. He's been there for the last, I think he's in his fourth year now. And I know that he's got so much out of that experience and had amazing coaching and training and, okay. but I wasn't, I don't think that when I, and he took a gap here, so it was a year later than me, but I don't think that the the quality of university tennis and the opportunities that are given to you were as good when I was there. And I actually, I still think that they're definitely behind the, the, the US college tennis route, but definitely improving at the same time. I think he, he's very happy to hear that you have that uh, opinion about uh, UK universities now and tennis <laughs> in the UK because, uh, yeah, he was actually, he wanted to hear your opinion about. Um, oh, he did? Yeah. I, I can't see any of these comments. I, I'm, I must be missing out on all yeah, of these. Yeah, I think you, you the have the scroll there, like. down there, the bottom of the screen, there are some comments. But yeah. I see. Ben is very happy that you've acknowledged. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Here, glad the UK to. universities are much stronger, yeah, so. I think I think maybe they're going to catch up even more. Even yeah, more. I would say that the infrastructure of, of the States is still, you know, been there a lot longer. And yeah, but it, it takes time to 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 improve that. But I think that there are a lot of universities that are striving to to achieve that. And mm -hmm. so I wouldn't be surprised if in the future the best UK team is, is up there with with mm -hmm. with us teams as well and just a little bit on what someone that wants to go to the states um following a tennis scholarship maybe what should they expect in terms of competing at uni like how often does that happen um i don't know is it a very very strong or are there very strong leagues like, um yeah so the way it works for most people is um, the full season, you, you, you play a lot of individual tournaments and that is kind of different at each university. So we were lucky enough that uh, we, would, we would be able to play, I think it was three or four Futures events every fall, um, which was great, a great experience. And, and we would have all of our expenses and transportation, uh, hotel, 
entry fee covered by the university. So that's mm -hmm. that was a great thing to be able to do. So the way that we would do it is everyone in the team would enter and anyone who got in would be taken, which, which was great experience. And then we would have two or three college college tournaments that were played on an individual level so we would have kind of they would call them invitationals um where universities are invited to bring a certain amount of players and then they can compete and then you would have regionals mm -hmm. uh which would usually be i want to say late october sort of time and that would then be followed by indoor nationals which is it which would be around november mm -hmm. and the way you get to nationals is either being highly ranked or or winning in those regional tournaments and then where it would really ramp up is the spring where season starts and you're playing with your team and that's what everyone looks forward to that's that's the most fun and okay. and that's where it all matters so we'll play i want to say around 20 anywhere between 20 and 30 i think it's different at each university but 20 and 30 matches against different universities and you travel around the countries and that all kind of leads up to the NCAA tournament which happens in May um, and that's a, there's 64 teams that are part of that and that's what everyone's striving for so you're playing all these tournaments throughout and trying to get your ranking as high as possible and mm -hmm. and all vying for those places at the end. Um, when you said 60 something teams that sounds a lot like a lot yeah um, and i think people don't realize how many teams there are in the states oh there are so there many teams and hundreds yeah I th yeah I, I totally agree i think that people kind of make the mistake of thinking oh there's there's only fif the 15 big schools that they've heard of that are, are known to us in the uk but they, as i said there's 64 teams that play in the ncaa's and the level is high all across the board mm -hmm. so there's a there's a massive range of different opportunities in different universities that have good tennis teams that are, that give you the opportunity to compete, which is great. So if someone wants to, there is a uni or a university for everyone, probably. I would say so. Yeah, I think there's. I don't know how many teams have how, how many tennis teams there are in in Division One, mm -hmm. but I know that the I think the top fifth the top fifty get ranked uh, at the end of the season, but. There's, there's probably 125 teams, something like that. So, yes, there's a university for everyone. Yeah, a lot of chances to play all year round. Let's say. Agreed, yeah. Okay, um, I think we're going to maybe try and uh, finish with a round of quick fire questions, if that's okay. Oh, yeah, I remember you mentioned that. Yeah, cool. yeah. So we're going to start because it's something someone actually asks um, with favorite shot. Favorite shot? Mm hmm Ooh, probably drop shot volley. That's the most satisfying shot, I would say. <laughs> number one strength as a player. Your number one strength. Uh, probably my serve, I would say. Favorite tennis player. Well, it was Joe Wilfred Songa, but he is not as dominant these days. So I got to say Federer. Okay. Uh, pick a doubles partner. Anyone? Well, I think, um, you know, you could choose your friend Ben. Right? <laughs> I'm sure he would choose him. Or, or Max. Ben or Max. Or Ooh, Max. That's a tough, tough Who pick. would you choose? Poor, I, I can't answer that because one of them will kill me. If I did, so I can't answer that. <laughs> um, summer or Christmas? Summer. Favorite film? Goodwill Hunting. Song you have on repeat, song or podcast or playlist? Ooh, song, podcast or playlist. I listen to the Joe Rogan podcast a lot. Mm -hmm. I think there's, he has some really interesting people on there all the time. And I, 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 I listen to a lot of those. So that, that's mm -hmm. my answer. For that. Another <laughs> one would be, I think you're, who would win between you and your brother? Oh, <laughs> definitely me. We played yesterday. Okay. <laughs> Another chance tomorrow for a rematch. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> I think still a couple years, but it's he's getting scarily close now. So I might have to lay down my racket against him so he never beats. <laughs> uh, Ben's asking favorite about the favorite Chelsea player. Oh, favorite Chelsea player, Didier Drogba. 
Mm-hmm. I like Country you'd move to apart from the States. Ooh, that's a tough one. Probably Italy. Okay. Uh, phone call or text? Text. Night in or night out? Night out. <laughs> Marmite or Brussels sprouts? Brussels sprouts. I hate Brussels Marmite. <laughs> Good. And I th- yeah, I th- I th- that's all for me. I think we've gone through the favorite Col- Cornell tennis memory someone's asking, but if you want to share it again, please do. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Uh, as I said before, uh, winning the Ivy League title freshman year will, will be a highlight for a long time, I think. Good. Well, I think that's, that's it for me. That's about it. Thank you very much for Absolutely. doing this. I'm it glad. Be really interesting for me as well. And I think for a lot of um, players that might consider going to the States to play tennis and to study. Glad to hear it. Yeah. Um, and I guess if anyone, if anyone watching has any questions, uh, feel free to just message me. No, yeah. no worries. Absolutely. Great. Great. Well, thank you very much. Have a no worries. new year. Happier than the one. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Happy new year. Hopefully everything will be back to normal soon. Great. Thank you very much. Have a good one. Thanks. Bye. Bye.